So, got to ask you, Gil, first. I, I, that fucked him up. <laughs> come on, man. It sounded like the Come intro. back home. Shark, like the, come back it home. Sound, look, it sounded like the intro to a Netflix series. Like, you're just going to push play after this. Like, yeah, this, <laughs> might, this might be interesting. You're going to watch it the first time, but after that, I just got into succession. Like, I don't need to see that. The open every single time. But you see it get better and better. Yeah, it do, it do, it right? it so this it seems do. like a good series. It's getting better. So former Lakers fan trying to bring you back on the squad, but Gil, current Lakers fan, do you believe in this Lakers squad? Yes. Remember, I was the one who said we want to stay in seventh. You did. We want to stay in seventh because it's an easier road to the championship. We got that seventh spot. We're about to play some 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 young Memphis Grizzly. Going to spank on them, and then, you know, we'll see who uh, round two is. So, ooh. so you think that performance last night warranted good momentum for a win against Memphis? That performance last night, that was a good enough indicator that you guys ready for playoff basketball. Um, LeBron played well. Andy Davis played well. D'Lo didn't play so well. And we won. What happens when all three of them is dynamite? Y'all gonna lose. When all three of them? Yes. Is? Against who? Whoever. Dylan Brooks? Yeah. What's that buff dude name? The buff one? That look, <laughs> he looked like you, but light skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Built like a pit bull. He can't even close his arms, man. No, he can't man. even close his arms. That's who we scared of. That was of? a bad game last That's who night. we scared of. That was a good game for y'all. That's just what y'all celebrating. Oh, we, just, we just get a win. We just a celebrator. Come on, man. And it's a win. That looked like an eliminator. That wasn't no celebrate. That was an eliminator <laughs> performance right there. Yeah. They, look, and what did I call? Minnesota by six. Y'all was scared the whole game until the, to the end. When it matters. <laughs> Winning time. You said by 15. It was by 15. Oh, shit. How much you won by? Six. Uh, by guess, a, good, a solid six, though. It was an eloquent six. That was a nasty six. No, it was, honestly, it was a struggle watching that game. I think they was down 11 at halftime. Yeah. But Just Dennis Schroeder, Rui. But we, we, we talk about... Russell being a, a real game changer. D'Angelo Russell got to be there. He, like, I, I don't like the inconsistency there. Like, I want to roll with y'all, you know what I'm saying? But it's like Schroeder or him, right? Schroeder's so inconsistent to me, but he still got game enough to show up when it matters. He at least got that grit. D'Angelo didn't show me nothing last night that, that showed, like, I'm going to lead the team to where they need to be, right? Then you got... LeBron thinking now, like, I got to step into the point forward position, get guys. That's why he made the play at the end of Schroeder. Like, that was a D'Angelo Russell play supposed to make that play. No, but, you know, when you're, when, you're talking about, when you're talking about playoffs and you're talking about a seven-game series, to be honest, Anthony Davis and LeBron, there are four and a half games they have to be great, yep. right? D'Angelo Russell... Two out of the seven. Yes. Schroeder one. Um, AR one. Yeah. Right. So you you know you have the the role guys. They just have to be great one game each. Yeah. That's it. You know it's not it's not like you need D'Angelo Russell to have twenty every game. Right. It just just we need you one time if somebody's off and that's really it when it comes to the playoffs. But LeBron the the the, the stars have to really be there. You know there's no way Le, uh, LeBron can have ten fifteen. Right. And Russell has 30. It won't work like right, that. Right. You know, so. So we know that the inconsistency then comes with LeBron and AD being on the floor at the same time for a long extended period. More, I think that the longest they've been is like five games total consecutively mm -hmm. throughout the season where they've been on the floor. So it's like, all right, can we keep them on the floor together? And can they play great for those five straight games, four straight games? Like you said, you're saying great, mm -hmm. right? which is good, meaning AD is at that 17 and 12, or LeBron is at 25 mm -hmm. and eight and eight. That's good. They need to play great. So if they're not playing great, you got that one, two performance from uh, Russell you're talking about, where he might have 30, might have 28, an AR performance, he might have 20. Mm -hmm. But if they're not doing that, and we got to look at them as wild cards for doing that, like, oh, we don't know who's going to play tonight. I'm not trusting that shit, man. I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't trust them against um, any veteran team, but we, we are playing the Memphis Grizzlies. You're right. They they have right. one superstar. You're right. Right. Um, and then they, you know the, the, they have great role players. Like they're scary because they actually play with each other. Yep. 
right? So that's the scary part of Memphis. But at the end of the day, they only have one true star. And, um, you know, when it comes to close games, referees and stuff like that, they're going to always give the advantage to star power. You're right. And that's, that's, the only, that's the only advantage that I we see. We saw a little bit last night, but the, the officiating was, was some of the trashest shit I think I've seen. <laughs> it's the playing, lock in, tricked off goal, Tanny call. I mean, it was like, what, what are we doing, fellas? Listen, I, re, I, I rewound that last play on Michael Conley at least 12 times because I, I, I need to see that ref after. Hey, hey excuse me, sir. You, so you didn't think it was a foul? <sighs> at that moment in time... The way he shot, like, if I'm a referee, the way he just shot the ball, yeah. he did not shoot the ball. Yeah. So at that point, you know, there's no follow-through because he's not shooting. He's just tossing. And then, you know, we're, we're, we're closing out, turning around. If there's contact at that point, okay. incidental, already out of bounds, the play's over with, the shot's up. You know, so it's a questionable call. You're fucking home. But you know what? why it's questionable, right? Think about the charge call, right? Uh, K Love, Draymond, that momentum that takes you into the charge where you know you stop and mm -hmm. you barely hit them, and they and then like that's the charge, right? It's the same thing on the shooting foul. Trey Young get a lot of those. Steph get a lot of those. After I shoot it, if you happen to just touch me a little bit, it's my job to sell mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. And for for Mike Conley being in that corner right there, ref right there got to make that call just because. And I, and I get what you're saying, time, score, mm -hmm. situation, that's a trash call, right? Just because there ain't no way that he's going to make that shot because of the way he shot it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's desperation, they need this shot, mm -hmm. right? Because if you give them these three points, they try to fight. Yep. It changes the game, 100%, mm -hmm. like no, you're saying. Well, the problem, the, the, this would have been a real problem. If he made that three. That's what I was going to say. And he blew that whistle. That that referee would be woo. You know what I mean? That referee would be gone. Yes. Because you just like you know that's one of those things where it's it's you have to really look at the play and make sure that you're making the right call. And the fact that he did not actually shoot the three and it was just like that was the only question. Um, other than that, I mean. Because it's not like he followed through. It was basically one of those tosses. Like, it could have went 50-50. You know, you're at, you know, you, n ref, know where you are. Right? <laughs> that, know where you are. you could have got fucked up in the parking lot. That's all I'm saying. You could have got fucked up in the parking lot. Like you said, if that shit goes in. That was the, the concern. And now you essentially give him that win because Conley's not going to miss that free throw. We know he's a seasoned vet. Yes. That's where the issue became. And it, it wasn't like they were calling it consistently all game. Mm -hmm. Like, even in OT, Cash should have fouled out. I think first or second player OT, AD got a bucky, fouled the shit out of him. They didn't call it. So it's like, what are we doing? We're not calling the bullshit. Let, let it go. But in that moment, that could have potentially stopped LeBron and Lakers from fulfilling the prophecy. And like you said, you in LA, you got you to gotta get out that arena. Out of that arena. And I told y'all too in the group chat, I said, I, it's one of those games where some shit just happens. Shit like that, that ball go in. The Lakers lose on that. That's why I pick many, because I know that games like this are the shit games where you just, shit can fucking happen. And we just look at the game afterwards like, can y'all believe they called that shit? The best thing about what he just said, he picked many. <laughs> <laughs> you lost. <I> did. <laughs> you lost. <laughs> We're going to get more into that, the Lakers Grizzly series. Win some, you lose some. You live to fight another day. You live to fight another day. Hey, it's all good, especially when, you, when you're on these underdog pick -em, So Yeah, I said, that's, I can't lie too much. I got $4. Y'all got some of my bread. <laughs> I'm going to get it back. I got $4, man. I can't. Y'all got some of my bread. I'm going to get it back, underdog, if it's the last thing I do. Y'all already know. I've, I got my mind right. drinking a soda at... And they're not, and they not paying for that. I don't, okay. Hey, cover the logo. Just, cover the logo. But, Rashad, you mentioned AD and LeBron with the, with the five-game uh, stretches together. So this was their first five-plus game streak together since January 2021, as of a week ago. It's now, I think, closer to seven or eight games, which is some wild shit to think about mm -hmm. when you talk about, you know, this duo is supposed to be in the core and the nucleus of this Lakers squad. And even this year, LeBron missing the 13 games with the foot them being able to come back and do something special, get that seventh seed against all odds. They didn't think we could do it. We did it. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about LeBron a little bit. 
So he hit that, the game tying three late in the fourth quarter, off the pick and roll, beautiful. And on the final Lakers possession of the regulation, LeBron passed up a potential game winning shot, trusted his teammate, Dennis Schroeder, to knock down a three. They both came through with the ice in the vein celebration. One of your more beautiful moments in Laker fandom. I think it was something around like LeBron's 12th assist on game tying or go ahead jumpers in the fourth quarter in OT. So when you look at LeBron historically, He's been criticized his entire career for not forcing shots and making the right basketball play. And we talk about making the right basketball play. Mm -hmm. Jordan's done it. Kobe's done it. You know, you're talking about Jordan with Steve Kerr. Mm -hmm. Kobe throwing the lob to Shaq, mm -hmm. amongst other amazing plays in his career. But for some reason, LeBron gets clowned for it. So, girl, I'll start with you. Has LeBron changed the definition of clutch? I don't think he's changed the definition of clutch, but I don't think he's getting credit for his IQ and his greatness. Um, before, before Jordan came in, right? You know, Bird was considered clutch, Magic was considered making the right clutch plays. And um, there, was no, there was no real one man does it all type of image, right? When Jordan came as a guard, hitting game winners, carrying teams on his back, finishing a play, ending games, ending careers, it gave us the apex of what a superstar should be, what a franchise player should play <clears throat> like. So then we have Kobe, who mimics that, right? So when we have LeBron, and LeBron was considered Magic Johnson first, he's Magic, with Jordan-like ability. So if you ask the question, all right, what's his gift? Magic mentally, Jordan jumping ability. Okay, so when he comes down and he has this game winner and he sees a three-point shooter open, that's the magic in him. We, when he averaged 30-some points, we want to give him the Jordan title. Oh, nah, he has to be like Jordan. Why he ain't making that? And I think that's the problem that came with LeBron. Instead of us saying, yo, He's making the right play in his, in his world. Like, we have to consider what he is. Like, if Steve Nash did it, right? Steve Nash made the right play to players. Um, uh, was it? Um, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul. You know, these guys are going to make the right play. They're not going to sit there and force shots that they're not used to making, right? So what's the difference if that's his skill? Right? And I think that's the genius of it. Like, he's not trying to lose games to try to put, be put into a box that he knows he can't be, be put, in, put in. I mean, we live, right? Yeah, we, we are live. live. The chat is booming. Look, man, we're not going to give LeBron credit for not having killer <laughs> instinct. Right? Which is a different Killer thing. instinct Clutch is killer one thing uh -huh. that magic do not have. Uh-huh. Right, mm -hmm. so we're giving we're giving LeBron the magic DNA, which is we want you to have killer instinct to take over the game in those specific moments. Right, this is not Game Seven Finals. Kerr wide open, Jordan kicks the Kerr. This is play in game. Schroeder's open. You could have dunked that on Cat, but you decided to pass it. Right, killer instinct. I need killer instinct for you to be considered a great all the time, right? Killer Instinct, I'm LeBron, I'm 6'8", I'm juggernaut with a basketball. Anyone near the rim is in trouble when I got it. Dunk on everybody. We've seen you do it. You don't need to defer to your teammates just so the fans feel good about you passing the ball. Fuck that. You're LeBron. Run everybody over and dunk that shit and let's walk out of this bitch with a win. You passing the Schroeder don't give you a fucking a bouquet of flowers saying, <laughs> look, he passed the fucking ball to Schroeder in the corner. Like, yeah, I'm glad Schroeder finally hit that shit because he said he remembered the last time. That Hornets game. Yeah, mm -hmm. like when I, I'm LeBron and I give you the fucking ball and you need to make that shot and we like, uh, and you don't. Like, it's like LeBron has to be thinking, I should have dunked that shit. What do I be thinking passing up the ball to these guys when I can just dunk that shit, right? Man, I... Now, I could be a bit critical of him in these moments because, like you said, he is making the right plays, right? He's being point guard-like. But we're comparing him to the Kobe Bean, Mamba Bryant. We're comparing him to the, the black cat, 
Michael Jordan, and that's the only thing, the only thing that changed him from them is killer instinct. LeBron ain't got that. I'm going to eat your heart out. Magic didn't have that. I'm going to eat your heart out. So if you don't got that, I can't say that pass to them was just because I didn't want to eat your heart out tonight. It was because that's the only play I had to make. So, But something I want to ask you, you think Magic didn't have that killer instinct? Because he showed, I think, coming in as a rookie, Kareem goes down. Bro, is that, is that one, killer instinct? No, no I'm just saying, one But play. I'm just saying, I, when I need to get buckets, I can do it, but that's not necessarily my game. But it's not eating your heart out to get that bucket. It's like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this bucket, right? But that's the DNA that they had. Here's the question then. You're in the corner. As Schroeder. Yep. And LeBron comes down. Mm-hmm. And LeBron forces that shot up and y'all lose. Mm -hmm. Would you be pissed no. that you was wide open in the corner? Because it's LeBron. No, no, no. If you was wide open in the corner and he's looking dead at I'm you. I'm an option. And he's looking dead at you wide open mm -hmm. and he tries to do some flipper, you're going to be mad as hell. No, I'm not. Because you're wide open. Because we living with it. Like you don't trust me to make the shot. No, because look, if it's you and I'm in the corner, right, and it's your team, this mm -hmm. is Gilbert's team. We living or dying with Gilbert at the helm. So whatever decision you make in that possession, mm -hmm. we all got to live with. That's and if I'm rolling with you as a, as a homie in the corner and I know that he looking at me, he know he want to pass that to me. Mm -hmm. But he like, shit, I trust my shit. I tr and I'm trusting Gilbert because Gilbert been trusting his shit that's got him this team. But So I'm like, yo, Gil got to take... If he got it, he got it. If I'm open, he throw it to me, I got to deliver for you because you trusting me with the but shit you don't now, want. Now, if I don't pass it to you, what does that tell you? He don't trust me to make it. Nah, he trusts you. You trust you more than you trust me. But that's the that's what LeBron is telling his teammates. I trust you guys. Yeah, that's, that's why I make it easy. Because he ain't got Scottie Pippen in the corner. He I would ain't pass Scottie Pippen in the corner. Whoever. You, I'm, not <laughs> passing the Schroeder. I'm not passing the Schroeder in the corner. Tie game. Not passing the Best Schroeder. Shot. Like, in the but that's what I'm Black saying. Black German. That's like, already. I'm just saying. What, what, what I'm saying is, it's it's. it's he been through a lot. <laughs> like you're, you're talking about, like you're talking about, like, like I I took shots, right? Like I took those. Those were my shots. Mm -hmm. But I, I understood how to hit game winners. I knew the angles. Yes. There's never a great angle on the side of the, the where he's at. That's never a great angle. Right? You have the baseline, you have the sideline, you have the defense, you have a guy trying to take a charge. So when he's coming, he don't really have this angle anyway. So the best move he could have possibly done was here and try to reverse it with his left hand, which the guard who was there could have just did this. So that open spot was it. I don't know, Gil, because think about it. You're thinking about it from a scorer's position. Mm -hmm. LeBron is not thinking about it from a scorer's position. Think about the play. We run the play Rewind back. Rewind it. We run the play back. You look Rewind. at LeBron, his momentum going toward the, the rim, it looked like a play. This was a play because he was going to the to the cup in such a manner where if he wanted to lay that bitch up and go reverse. It's only, it's like only, left hand reverse is the only thing he could do. AD was right there. He was being boxed out. He literally was giving him the lane so he could do that. Nah, AD was in the back. So then you look, you make that pass because it's, it's wide, wide open. open. But it's the play. What I'm saying, if you rewind it, rewind it. There's one thing that you're missing. When he's driving, he's driving, he looks up at the rim to see where he was. So when he jumps, he realized he he can't make that. He's selling it. He can't he's make sell it because it's a play. Think about it. He we need it. We got it. We need a three. No, it was tie game. Was it tie game? 95, no, I you... 95. That put what? them up three. Yeah, so look, look, so look. look. So, so look. Look at that. Look at that. He's done. He couldn't make that shit. Go back. Keep going. Go look. from the other angle. Other angle. So you can see LeBron's face. Right, look. He's going to look up. He right, look, look, see? He see that that man, that man got all that. <laughs> he got all that. Yeah. I mean, he could have, he could have, he could have went with that. That's a layup reverse, right? Yeah. I just, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, you can see he, uh-uh, I got that. But he's wide open. LeBron is saying like, man, he wide, wide open. That's a Ben Simmons. He but, wide, but Ben Simmons. But wide my, my favorite thing is Austin Rivers knew right but away. But what I'm saying is. He knew right away. It's, I, 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 I've watched the plays, right? We watch it. Now, now let's, let's take it out of LeBron. Let's put in like a player like Westbrook, right? When you have a player who's stubborn, 
to try to make those plays, to try to prove to everybody that I'm going to make those, and we've seen the results. We've seen what people say about them, yep. right? So it's like, which side of the coin do I want to be on? LeBron wants to be on the side where I'm just giving ourselves the best chance of winning. Fuck the Jordan. Like, I'm, I'm not him. I'm not him. I want the W. That's where he Because if he, if he would admit, now let's try this. If he don't, if he, if he don't and he tries it, they get the ball back, they have a chance to win it. Right? He knows he's not Jordan. He's trying to make his own lane. So I want to win. I want to win. The easiest, listen, the easiest, that shot was the easiest for him to try to take because no matter what, we can go to overtime. I feel like he takes the shot. If he misses the layup, AD taps it in because he's in rebound. Maybe. He's in offensive rebound position. Everything is moving Kyle so Anderson, fast. Kyle Anderson has No, ain't no way. But what AD, I'm saying is AD, AD was right yeah, there. No, you're right. But I hear you. I Everything, hear everything's you. moving so fast. It makes sense. Like, Everything is moving fast. And but, as a, right as a, but as a player, I, I, you, you have to give him the credit for really trusting these players over and over. I, was, I lost to a trusted play. When I missed those two free throws mm -hmm. and Damon Jones came in and Damon Jones ain't played none that game. None the game before that. And he baits us all and throws the ball to Jam Damon Jones, who's been cold for two games to hit a shot to win the game. To win the game, not the top, to win it. And I'm telling you, he didn't, pick, he didn't pick Damon Jones to be that recipient. That shit. Just, that just happened to happen. Just, just like, put him in the game? Just, hey, because you need a shooter. You need somebody to Put him in the shoot. game? Him. He ain't played last game. Look, Schroeder don't make that shot. We talking different. Just like if Damon Jones don't hit that shot, we talking different. But if if was a fifth, we'd be drunk as fuck, so we ain't going to use the if, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to say, all right, Schroeder hit that shot because LeBron knew that in this possession, man, we need to make something happen. We mm -hmm. need something, and we need to take the pressure off of me. I take the pressure off of me. But what is the pressure? The is pressure, that more pressure? I'm not. I'm not the. I'm not the reason why we're going to the. Like I'm not scoring the ball for it to be like the reason why we're going to but, the but, next. But what I'm saying is, why is the greatness? If the greatness was like the greatness can't just be because of fucking Michael Jordan. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm, that's the only reason we're, ju we're we're judging people off of game winning is because of fucking Michael Jordan. But we're nobody else in history. We're celebrating LeBron right now for making a pass to Schroeder in the corner. No, we're celebrating the Lakers for winning the game. Man. To keep, we're, like, for, for, for moving to the next thing. We're, yeah. we're, we're celebrating the victory. I don't give a fuck how the victory happened. Like, we, we make fun of people. We say, hey, don't, coaches say it all the time, hey, don't, be, don't play hero ball. Right. Right? Don't play hero ball. There's a reason they say that. Because the motherfucker always think he, he out there being trying to beat Kobe Bryant, just throwing up shit, losing games. Right? So when a player does the right play, we can't say, oh, he should have took the shit himself and been Jordan. But we can say, hey, man, this is a game y'all shouldn't even have had close. This is supposed to be a game y'all supposed blown out by. Well, if it was the fifth, we all be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's what I'm saying. So it's like, for me, I'm looking at the situation like, yeah, he made the right play. Yeah, y'all won. But y'all supposed to win. And to your point, if Schroeder misses that shot, it's a completely different discussion. And that's just how it goes anyway. Even he makes a shot. Oh, LeBron don't got that and dog. Y the link, that and y'all the It doesn't Lakers. matter either way. So really getting the wins the most important thing. I just want to talk a little bit. I get what you're saying. I get what you're wait, saying. Wait, I mean, wait. Let's, how, many, how many shots? Great Curry. How many clutch threes have Curry actually made? Less than four, five. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But no one's questioning it because, one, they fucking blow everybody out. <laughs> that's what I think. They just, they just, he's sitting down in the fourth quarter half the time. But, you know, even when those plays are happening, it's a team thing. Yep. Right? It's a team thing. Because they teams move so well, anyone can take that shot. So I guess we're talking about now is when you get to the point where you can trust your teammates with shots like this, it's beyond the the, the, the point of you trying to prove to others that you could do it. Now it's just being done because it's the right play. It, like, yeah, let me make this play because I don't got to prove to y'all that I can do it. You play with KG. How many game winners did KG try to take? A lot. Or, or did he make the right play? He had to. Yeah, make the right play. He had to make the right play. Yeah. yeah. No, I get so, it. But, you know, being on that side, what does it mean to have a teammate trust you like that? And, and this is something we've talked about before, Gil. A lot of guys aren't clutch, right? Mm -hmm. it, it don't mean you don't need to be a superstar to be clutch. A lot of guys might do work first, second quarter, but as soon as it gets to winning time, you know, cheeks start getting a little, little scrunched in, and, and, <laughs> and they don't have that ability where, like you say, you throw Damon Jones in the game, ain't played in two games, but I know I need him to make this shot, and, and he don't give a shit what point in the game it is. So 
How do you develop that trust? And even I was looking at LeBron, but just on a broader scale, even with yourself, with your teammates, I know you joke a lot about, you know, guys wouldn't put enough work in. Mm -hmm. But did you have that teammate that you could trust? Like, I need this dude to get a bucket. I'm a yeah, yeah, for the, listen, like, okay, one-on-one -on -one skill, like when you're talking about players that, that, that are gifted at one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's, it's feet, right? It's, it's understanding how your first two steps are very important, right? So when you think about, you know, Michael Jordan, Kobe, or someone like a Scottie Pippen, their first two strides are great, right? If you look at, you know, someone like LeBron, his first two strides are duck walk, mm -hmm. and then he's momentum. Right, so it'd be hard for him to be a one-on-one -on -one player posting up and doing all of that. Um, two, it's it's security of being okay with missing a shot. Every superstar is not; they don't want to be a bad guy. They don't want the booze and all of that. You have to be able to take a shot, miss it, go home, right? Practice, come back, and and short-term memory loss. So you know that sometimes separates gamers, guys who are clutch from everybody else, are you willing to, to, to be a disappointment if you miss this shot? Mm -hmm. A lot of superstars mm -hmm. are not happy with that. Mm -hmm. like, I, I can't, you know, like I let my team, the guy, I let my teammates down. Like you, that's hard. That's hard. That's part of the killer instinct yeah. too. That's a part of the DNA mm -hmm. is that let down, that shame. Mm -hmm. that fuck, if I miss this, they might not want me to take the shot again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm like they might not start trusting that I can be that guy. And think about it, you started in practice when they're doing the last second shots, mm -hmm. going over the three, two, one. Yep. Who's going to be our guy we run the play for in the last seconds? Mm -hmm. Gilbert has shown to make it in practice more times than not. Let's give him a shot. See if he do, see what he do in the game. Now you see it, if it get close to going in in the game, he's like, he might be our guy because he got balls to just mm -hmm. shoot it. He got the balls to shoot it. Like you looking for that mentality. So... It's easier to find that when you know that you practice for it, you live for those moments. But some guys, like you said, they they not, they, they it's nut cutting time. They don't yeah. smell the popcorn. They don't look forward for that moment. Like, yeah, who, who we drawing a player for? Cool coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and fucking cool coach. Give me the goddamn. I'm young Michael Jordan. I'm I'm Scotty. Mm -hmm. Bro, get, get roll with me. So when you don't get that play, you feel some type of way when that dude don't deliver. Yeah, for sure. Like, damn, man, I could have delivered that shit. Let me yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Let me get that shit. I mean, cause everybody always talk. They, they talk about the two free throws and they make jokes or whatever. But I've seen enough. But I'm saying I've seen enough of you play to know that you, you know, it wasn't a fear or a, like you just missed the shits. Like just miss. It's, it, and and, and it's, it's crazy to say that because people see now. Oh, he he punked out, bitch out, whatever. But it's like it's not. You know, when I think of like a Nick Anderson, somebody like that, like that, that was in his head, like. Yeah. And fucked up his game for the rest of his career. Mm -hmm. Where I really feel like, oh, you missed those two, okay. You know what's so funny is because Nick always brings it, oh, that ended your career, right? No, no one actually realized what that did, right? I missed those two free throws and I had to live with it, right? Which I was in the arena the next day or the same night, thousand free throws. Had to go to the military dude to just make sure my mental was okay, to understand the process of you know, never being in that moment again, right? Everyone laughs, but nobody actually looks at the next season and see what the fuck I did there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How many game winners did I make that year? There was one point where I was 41 for 46 from in the quarter shots, in the half shots, game winning shots. 41 for 46. I was the most lethal man with the ball with the last five seconds in NBA history. Boom. Nobody, nobody going to talk about that. Fun fact. Right? So when you, yeah. when all those game winner turnarounds and all those from the hash mark, I'm shooting from the hash mark, uh, Philadelphia, back to back, the Phoenix Suns, where there's the end of the quarter shit. Yeah, that was that, was that year. That was the following year. Mm -hmm. Free throws, beat Boston twice at the free throw line, beat Golden State at the free throw line in the game. The fuck, I remember they was doing that. They was doing all this. I, I, I got fouled. Um, Golden State, I got fouled. And I got two free throws. The coach gets angry. I think it was Don Nelson still. He gets, uh, he gets a technical, so I got three shots. No time left. Right? Golden State over there, you gonna choke. Man, y'all go back to the locker room. This All game right. over with. This All ain't right. last year. <laughs> fuck on to the... Hey, I'll do it after... Get the fuck on to the locker room. <laughs> I make one. 
hey, get on to the light. This game is over. I don't know. This ain't this ain't last year. A whole nother man. Go on. Like, what y'all waiting here for? But that's where the confidence turning around. It was it was a whole different person. Gil, Nobody so understood that. You proved my point. That was killer instinct. But I already had that. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. You already had it was but, built into you, but it was something that pissed you off that motherfuckers would even question whether you had killer instinct. What I'm instinct. saying is, but I had that growing up already. Yes. So if you don't have it, you don't learn that. Exactly. Right? So if he don't have it and he understands I don't have this, but what I do have is, is the ability to make the right play. Yep. And that's why I said we have to judge him for how he plays it versus trying to say you have to be him. And if you can't do that, then you're not a great. No, because before Jordan created this space, who, 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 was, who was considered a clutch and great? What was, who was it then? But, but this is the thing, the, the, the criteria between Kobe and It was and Jerry Mike. West, believe it or not. It, it was Jerry. Which is wild when you look at just what, one and eight in finals and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But you look at the criteria of what we consider to be greatest of all time, all of those di different things is Mike and Kobe has that ability to find a teammate, the ability to take over the game and have the clutch gene, mm -hmm. which is that killer instinct, right? The only thing that I always talk about in this debate is that LeBron lacks that one thing that would consider him that over top, overbearing greatest of all time. If he had that bite down, I'm gonna kill him. But why does he have to? He doesn't have to. He doesn't what I'm have saying to. Is, if you're gonna die, if you're gonna die, why does it matter? Like, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna chop your head off, right? Right? You're gonna see it coming. LeBron's like, okay, you're looking at me, let me throw it, boom, he's killing you. Well, you're dead anyway, so what does it matter? It matters, <laughs> it matters because <laughs> the job is done. The leaders who are are in the in the in the in the trenches with you know how to delegate. They're saying, "I'm going to cut his head off. Don't even worry." LeBron is saying, "You cut his head off. You cut his head off." No, Kobe and Mike saying, "Move. I got it." Yeah, but that's I got it. But, but we still winning. But either way, but, but what you're saying is we're still is that winning. Where's skill coming from, Michael Jordan? Everything, every the bas the game of basketball can't be designed by one man. I know, but we're talking about criteria that makes you the ultimate king, the by king of one kings. From who? But by the king himself, the one that was appointed first, the one that said, "Look, <laughs> not appointed first. These are, these are the things you need to have to wear the crown." No, but that's why I hand it to you. But that's what I'm saying. You can't judge everybody off the, the, the one basketball god. Why not? Because no one has that ability. You do it. They do if it. If I they, make they a one-of-one one car, it's one-of-one. One. Right. Everything after that can't actually get to that. No, but it can only right? mimic and look like. So it only can mimic and look like. And we're telling you this other version of something was created. And you're going to say, well, it's not this. It's Why do you want the same fucking thing? It's not this because because this if, is better. What I'm saying is, is if better. I mimic exactly that, what you're going to call me? A mimic. I'm going to call you B. B. No, yeah. So no matter what, if I'm fucking B, let me do B my way. So what LeBron is C. We're going to let him see it his way. No, I'm B. <laughs> because we already see. <laughs> we, 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 got, we, we already seen. We already, ABC, you see we already seen way. what Kobe did. Kobe tried to follow this road, and nobody ever let him get close. What you oh, mean? Oh, you're just copying him. You're copying the fadeaway. You're no, copying. No. You're, 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 you're copy. Oh, no, no, no. You're not him. You're copy. That's not the way. Right? So you're not going to give it to him anyway. So if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be, me, let me do me. I want to win games. I'm going to put my team in the best position. I'm not going to be selfish. I just don't have that gene. I don't have that skill. That's all I wanted to so hear. So why am I going to force it? That's all I wanted to But hear. he accepted that year one. Why nobody else has accepted it? I didn't know he accepted it, but now, that I, hear, accepted it. now that I hear from you, I'm good. <laughs> been I'm accepted good with it. it. Been I'm good. Because that's, that's what I've been fighting against. That's why he keeps. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> You that's jumped. all I've been fighting against. <laughs> you jumped. You're right. I'm with it. If you, if you accept it, I fucking accept it. Shit. But, but when we look at LeBron's narrative, what? Most playoff game winners, more than Jordan, yeah. more than Kobe, mm -hmm. more games. Let's, let's keep it real. He, he's, been, he's been doing this thing for a minute. But I even go back to like that 2016, game seven. And everybody talks about the Kyrie shot, but you always got to point out, Brian hit the three and three free throws, which I thought was, you know, and, and at that point in his game, them shits were shaky. Yeah. It was yeah. that jumper was shaky. Them free he he could have went and tricked all three of those, and, and I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been surprising. But then the presence of mind and talk to some of his teammates about it. All right, let's get Kyrie with the Steph matchup. Yep. Kyrie, I trust you. 
to go get Steph a bucket. And that's and that's 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 right there what we're missing. Would would, would Jordan have utilized Kyrie the way LeBron did? If he had to. Would he have? If he has Are you saying if Kyrie was uh Pippen? No, if Kyrie was Kyrie, if Jordan was if Jordan was on the team with Kyrie, will Kyrie be as great as he is and do what he does? No, because Jordan can finish those shots, so he's going to take those shots. Well, since LeBron doesn't do that, he gives it to the guy who can. You're right. Which now we get to see his greatness. Yep. Right? And that's that's what it is. Like it's you you have to judge everybody for how they play the game. We can't I can't tell you that this is the road you follow. Yep. You have to be able to follow your own road and let me judge you off of how you plan it. And I and I say that's the wrong thing. There's there's only a few mindsets that can walk inside Jordan's path of that part of the game. Yep. Right? Um but to be the next Jordan, you have to be exactly built the same, same mindset, same, you know, um, same killer. Like, like his killer instinct on the court is the same off the court. Yep. Right? Uh, we, we walk out of the door, I want to beat you to, you know, and so it's the whole package. Yep. There's only a few brains in the world that's moving as fast as Michael. You're right. Right? That's just... That's just the facts. It's just not playing on the court. It's the whole, it's the whole thought process. You're talking about the Tiger Woods, the Phil Ivies, those type of minds, the, the, the Brady's. Those, those minds are, are, are moving at a different frequency. We accept LeBron for who he is. Yeah. We no, no, you didn't. I didn't, but I'll do. I got now clarity. You, now you do. I got clarity. You know, he so you just ain't, so he you, ain't built like that. <laughs> See, he just he, ain't built like that. That's all. <laughs> he just ain't built like that. That's all. Uh, so we talked to Brian. Let's talk a little bit about AD. We talked about this a little earlier, but 24-15, <laughs> four assists, two steals, three blocks. Had a great game. But only thing we're going to remember from that game is the boneheaded ass foul. Good, you didn't think it was a foul. Regardless of whatever we think, Foul's a foul. Conley hits a three free throw. So you know me. I'm on Twitter all the time. Almost immediately after that play, the, the top trends were damn AD, trade AD, and what the fuck AD. Mm -hmm. Damn. And it seems like AD, Lakers fans have a love-hate relationship with him. When he's playing at the highest level he can play, which we've seen, he looks like a defensive player of the year candidate. looks like an MVP candidate. We've also seen that other side dealt with a lot of injuries and situations. Like, you know, I watched pretty much every game this season. I can't recall a game where it didn't look like, damn, he might have a, you know, season-ending injury. Mm -hmm. Shoulder, whatever. But it would just be like poking. I mean, it's like, God damn it. <laughs> like, man, can't catch a break. Like, he just might, oh! Always poke. something. Can't get right. Can't get right. So, question for y'all. Are Lakers fans too hard on AD, or does he deserve some of the criticism? Look, we're, 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 we should be lenient because he brought a championship. But we got to be hard on him because we know what he's capable of, right? And, and we know when AD's out there playing AD basketball, he's unstoppable. But uh, he hasn't been doing that for the past two years due to injuries and these little knick-knack bullshits, you know, Bambi legs, Bambi feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, uh, I was one of the dudes. Bambi. Because you know, y'all, when we hit the three, I was on a, I was on a group chat talking shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then, and then I, I and then another tweet came. Wait, wait, Ty, man, oh, trade yeah. that motherfucker, man, right now. <laughs> Just right then sub his ass out, God. Damn. And I was one of those too, so I, I can't even lie. But it's one of those things where it's, you know, it's we're fans, we're in the moment. Well, I think you look at tradition, mm -hmm. Laker tradition, the comparables. It's always unfair you go to the Lakers because you're going to be compared to the guys who got it done that were there before you, right? So AD, immediately, who do you compare him to? You don't go right away and say Paul Gasol or Bynum or any of those guys. You say Shaq. You compare him to Shaq. Say, how, compa <laughs> how comparable is AD to Shaq when it comes to like how he can take us to win championships, right? So now you got shoes to fill because you're the big man on campus. You here, you're supposed to take us to the promise. Now you got LeBron. LeBron is the same comparable. As soon as he came to L.A., the comparable was Kobe, right, and Magic. Now you always going to have comparables you got to live up to. A.D., you know the pressure of L.A. now. You, you've, been along, you've been around long enough to know that you got a championship. There's pressure on you. 
How do you deliver? How do you deliver? You deliver by knowing that the expectation exists, that you got to go in and you got to over exceed that expectation. Mm -hmm. And you can't come up short because now, you know, the media is just like New York. They ain't sitting around and waiting on you to turn into Shaq when that's the expectation. As soon as you sign, like, hey, we here to win championships. It's you and LeBron. How many people pair with LeBron and automatically think that there's a championship in, 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 in the mix? Every single one. Every single one. So why is it when you don't win, we don't really critique them about, like, you're playing with LeBron, bro. How you fuck that up? When, when Westbrook went to, Le, went to the Lakers, I'm like, how you fuck that up? You Westbrook. He LeBron. He AD. Y'all all on the same team. How y'all fuck that up? Right? So I'm looking now like, AD, bro, it's just the pressure of knowing that you got to live up to a nigga like Shaq, and he ain't going to respect you unless you bring some championships back. You got one. Just pop that little bubble. Shit don't fucking count. Hardest championship. So look, you got .5. I'll give you point half of one, right? We, we got to round up. Shaq and them looking like the same way. They're like, look, look, until you dominate and win the whole shit throughout a whole good season, everybody kind of healthy, and we can say, look, you got that. The Laker respect is not going to be there. Like, it's just not there for but, some reason. First of all, the Lakers don't respect nobody. They don't respect nobody. <laughs> Laker greats don't respect nobody, bro. They, <laughs> they look down on everybody. Big James Gaines. Big Green, Green was off the after LeBron hey, game. Hey, AC like, Green, AC <laughs> Green think he top five, okay? <laughs> <laughs> shit, he be like, I Robert Orr and them don't be playing that shit after the game. They be like, oh, that's shit When you hear him on their radio, man, everybody suck to them, man. It's like, I, that's the worst. <laughs> That's the worst legacy to follow. So now let's look ahead to this Lakers Grizzlies series. A lot of Lakers, but let's be honest, what the fuck else was there to talk about? We're gonna talk a little bit about the Hawks and the Heat for those who care. Mm. But I know a bunch of on your chat don't, and if you do, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> Before the game, Dylan Brooks said he wanted to smoke with LeBron and the Lakers. I wouldn't mind playing LeBron uh, in a seven game series. The legacy's there. Uh, first time back in the playoffs, knock them out right away in the first round. Man, it'll test us good, you know? They got good pieces, good players, and, and that'll be a good first-round matchup for us. So before we get into the nitty-gritty, we got a show uh, what Dylan Brooks looked like recently at, at a Grizzlies game. We, we got the... <laughs> oh, so man. If a, if a dude who looks like that... That's Pastor X, man. ...is talking oh, shit Pastor to X. you, like... Hey, man, he from Oakland, man. Pastor X from Oakland, man. Y'all go yeah, Google Pastor X, man. Yeah. He's Canadian though. Next caller. That man look like Drew Next Down. Caller. Hey, look like Drew Down. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm scrolling straight from the survival scrolls, bitch. What you mean? Next caller. I wanna be a is it I wanna be a pimp? I wanna be yeah. That Memphis. <laughs> I, I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit. No. I'm glad to see him not embracing the villain role. He looked like, you know, he was a pimp sub hose down. <laughs> but uh Lakers are two and one against the Grizzlies this year. With the Shannon Sharp Cardigan game really helping turn around the season, uh, should Dylan Brooks be trying to poke the bear like this? Is he? Did he? Po I mean, he's not. I mean, that he sounded a little humble. Yeah, I want LeBron so we come and go to seven to bust their ass and, and get a tune up for the next round. That's what he said. I mean, more or less. Sound, okay, I, I sound, mean, sound Land Stevenish. They'll give us a test. Sounds like Land Stevenish. We got a test. We can't pass. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it. It was. It was. I expected more out of. Out of Brooks. He's Canadian. Uh, is he Canadian? Damn. He looks look like a light-skinned Canadian. I'm just saying, it's just, it's just one of those things where I, I you know, it's going to be a good matchup. I, you know, this is not one of those, this might be like 49, 49.5, 50.5, you know, matchups. You know, anyone's going to win this one. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, you know, Lakers a favor just because of the experience and the star power through the refs. Um, <laughs> just, I'm just being honest. I don't really see how Grizzlies can really dominate. I mean, you, you, you're talking about trying to dominate. I don't, they just don't have the pieces to dominate. But, you know, just like any young team, I just really think they're going to they're gonna have the confidence. They're going to go out there and just play well as a team. Like they said before, nobody's scared of those big-ass footsteps. Mm -hmm. That's what we're I, I like I like Dylan's uh, Lance Stevenson approach. Lance to dance used to piss LeBron off when he was with Indiana. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the ear blows and all whisper that. Whisper in his ear and you know 
the <laughs> antics, the type of antics that you need to muffle up a series is this type of like bulletin board material, anything to get everybody's attention off of the fact that you you, you should be on strategy, you should be ready on your rotations and all that shit. Dylan is is the distract. He like the Dennis Rodman. You know, let me take the pressure off the guys who need to perform and let me get all the attention on me and the offsets when, when it's time to perform. So Ja really don't got no pressure. Bane don't really got no pressure. So it's like the more Dylan Brooks puts the pressure on him, the less he has to really perform, right? His whole job now is to get under LeBron's skin. When Lance was able to do that, Lance was the only one to show balls of Indiana during that series. And I remember that... PG and certain guys on that team was mad at Lance because he was waking up the bear. This was he's like, hey man, why you waking them niggas up? They sleeping. You wake, you woke up D-Wade, you woke up LeBron, now they done whooped our ass. And now PG want him out because it's like, man, you you the reason we lost because you woke them niggas up. No, that's facts. That's what I said. Yeah, he blowing in the ear, this motherfucker dropping 40 something on him. Hey, you can blow in this motherfucker all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. We we look at all the the antics, but there was a result. Yes, the result ended that you woke this motherfucker up, and he's playing demon basketball now. But that's what you say. You want that so that LeBron does take over the series, and I think that's what it, it's going to propel to. It's Dylan Brooks waking up LeBron the bear, the cocaine bear, mm -hmm. ready to chew and eat anything that he see. I think that's what the killer instinct that can be brought out of LeBron. When people say he has that in moments, mm -hmm. let's see that when Dylan Brooks get under your skin. That's what showed me, like, all right, he got some, some thug elements that he can wake up to where a motherfucker come start poking at me like, hey, man. I'm gonna, it, it, I'm like that motherfucking people, hand off. You better some, stop fucking fucking poking me. There's some people you just don't want to poke. Right? There's some people you just don't <laughs> you just don't poke. It's just easy to just <laughs> just <laughs> Like, I understand, like, you know, you poking, um, you know, Draymond Green. That's a good poke. Good poke. Right? You, you don't want to poke Steph Curry, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, ends, that doesn't end well. You know, so there's really, you know, you got to be careful on who you're poking out there because, you know, sometimes, you know, um, when a person do wake up, it's, it's kind of hard to rewind them back. <laughs> <laughs> put them back down. Sometimes you can't put the clown back in the box. Hope you're listening. Hope you're listening. <laughs> you're listening. You can't what? put that motherfucker back down out there, pop out. I don't, don't go back in the jack in the box once it's cranked open. <laughs> he gets to acting clownish. <laughs> Girl, they want to know. Oh, they want to know. Oh, that was not, that had nothing to do with the Grizzlies and the Lakers. And we already oh, talking. That they want to. That was a personal oh, shit. They want to know why you doing the Bill Cosby bro. voice if you got some Jello pudding on deck. <laughs> All right, but let, we got Coke. Timberwolves legend in the building. Hey, Coke. They got to uh, stop you know, it. They got to come with a bag. Coke. There you no, go. they got to come with a bag. There you go. Hey, Coke. Coke. <laughs> Coke. Coke. Come you know, with a bag. I love how no matter what we talk about, you can always you can always bring it back to your personal situations. This ain't personal. I'm just saying Coke. Just saying, There's a body of good but for everyone out there. We had the cocaine bear reference earlier in the show. We got... <laughs> Man, I don't really know what y'all talking about. I don't need, do not throw personal shots. I'm a need, professional. You need help. You're a, I'm a professional. You need professional help. Sign Ben Gordon crazy. jersey. Yeah, you can only wear this. Oh, that's because I'm going to be in Chicago. That's fine. I'm going to be in Chicago this summer, so I just wanted to rip the shot. Let them boys know I'm going to be back there all summer. You can mm. only wear this outfit certain parts of L.A. And I will not certain be in any of those parts with you. I will be in the car. I have just seen them. Rooting you on from afar. But let's talk about these Timberwolves. So going into this game, I think they were 34 and 36 uh, with Gobert, 8 and 4 without them. 34 and 30. What? Say it again. So this season, 34 and 36 with, with Gobert in the lineup, uh -huh. 8 and 4 without them. Now we talked that Jamie Daniels seemed like a, a bigger loss, but they also didn't have Nas Reed. And you got to think if – if Nas Reed is available and Gobert doesn't play, it's a little bit different game. But how much did the Wolves miss Gobert in this game? Didn't I call that trade shit last year? It's, I thought I called that shit trade last year. You traded all those, uh, those pieces for Rudy Gobert. <laughs> Didn't I say some shit? I remember saying something about that horrible last trade. You traded all those pieces for someone who just... Mm. Hmm. Seems like a lot to... And it also fucked up the whole trade market moving forward because like we talked about if Gobert's worth this, then... What is KD worth? What is, you know, 